go back in the record in the antimatter. Hey, Miss Ante, you're still under oath. Thank you. <coughs> Council, you may be seated. Thank you. So, Lindsay, we've kind of gone through some, uh, some American Express statements regarding purchases. Um, <coughs> Bobby had made between November and January of, November of 2017 through January of 2018. And during this time, did you believe that any purchases he made with his American Express card um, would be then paid off by funds that you had given him? Absolutely not. And the $26,100 in funds you had given him, that was prior to marriage, you know, correct? Yes, it was. And that was to be held in the Goldman Sachs account for the sole purpose of building interest, is that correct? That's correct. And during the times of all these purchases, um, you thought that Bobby was, was making these purchases and that he was going to pay off with his own money. Correct? Yes, he had enough savings. He was working. I had no reason to believe he wasn't using his own money. Did he ever tell you that? American Express card would then be paid off with any of the funds you had given him to place in the Goldman Sachs account? No, I never discussed any debts of his that I would pay off besides the car. And you had indicated that it was during your honeymoon that that's when um, you confronted him to show him the bank statements to demonstrate where that $26,100 had gone, right? Right. Yeah, I, and your I, owner I, asked and answered. Sustained. And at any time after that honeymoon, did you ask him where the funds had gone? Yes, I again asked him to show me his statement. And he laughed at me and said, why? I'd like you to turn in the big binder to number PLTF157. And exhibit six. Did you say 157? PLTF 0157. 157. Thank you. And are you on this page, Lindsay? Yes, I am. Is this a text message thread between you and the defendant? Yes, it is. And on this thread, um, which text would, would be sent from you? The dark, uh, the dark one. And on the second message <coughs> you had sent, it states, I want your bank and credit card statement since November. That's correct. That, that's the text message you sent, correct? Mm hmm And his response is, from what cards and why? Only the B of America has been used, and I haven't used my Citibank in years, just paying it down now. The American Express has about 700 on it. Correct. Was, Never telling me about 20000 Was this the most, essentially, detailed accounting of... Uh, his bank accounts that you ever received? Yes. And you never received uh, any type of statement indicating what those amounts were or what charges were on those cards, is that correct? No, they all went to his mother's house. And it doesn't look like there's a date on this message. Do you recall the date of the general time frame of when you had sent this? I believe this was in about May, but I started asking him for statements in January. And then this continued it until about May when this was sent. Yeah, right? once we came back from the honeymoon, every single month was a fight. And regarding his text, the American Express has about 700 on it. Did you believe that to mean the current balance owed? Right. <coughs> Is it your understanding that Bobby incurred approximately $20,000 on his American Express card and then paid those amounts in full with funds you gave him to be held in savings? Yes, he did. Your Honor, I'd like to admit um, PLTF 157 evidence. Um, I'm going to object under the best evidence rule as it doesn't contain a date, doesn't contain phone numbers from which they came from. Um, just general, general information that would be used to verify its authenticity. By whether or not it's, it's an authentic document and those are the text said and then ultimately um, you know, what their impression of what the text men said and their mind said and sending those texts so if he were to dispute sending it I guess you could, you could question that. Right now
just that one page. Yes, and it's a little unconventional, but we, we have all the text messages on the phone still. If you, if you want to verify that it was the exact thread, I know it's uh, only regarding documents and, and the binders, but we do have the, the actual phone and actual text present. I would object as it was something that should have been disclosed. If, if the whole chain was relevant, the whole chain should have been disclosed before November 15th. This entire Exhibit 6 seems to me like it was attached to something because there are exhibit numbers and pages in between. Right. Was this produced early on in the case or was it attached to a motion? So this was actually, because um, the what was it attached back, to? Um, the plaintiff had filed, she had filed a, while there was a pending divorce, a complaint for separate maintenance and the uh, matters were consolidated. This was before we. Right. We came right. on the council, but the matter was consolidated, <coughs> and this right. was the entire document filed. So all Exhibit 6 is something that was filed as early as December 19, 2018. To a complaint? This is attached to a complaint? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Okay. Um, so were there, were there ever any... I mean, you bait, Bates numbered them. Were they produced through discovery? Yes, they were produced, Your Honor. Were there any... Uh, objections to authenticity when they were produced through discovery. We did not make the objection at the time. We planned on saving it for trial. Okay, well you can't. I understand. Um, and we're trying to keep it as narrow as possible regarding certain Bates numbers and right. um, those, the present one is a single text. I think your objection goes to the weight, not the admissibility. Fair enough. Okay, so it's all right. Thank you, Your Honor. 150 spades number 157 is admitted. Not 158 that goes with it. Just that one page, that's all they have. I won't lose it entirely. <laughs> we were going to go till 1230. Is that okay with you? Do you want to go ahead and start? Sure. I'd be happy to do okay. that. Okay. All right. Good. Lindsay, if I could ask a preliminary question, how would you prefer for me to address you, Ms. Lakari? Lakari. Ms. Lakari? Okay, perfect. All right, Ms. Lakari, if you could turn to Exhibit A, please, in the defendant's binder. Go ahead. So this is your financial disclosure form, correct? One of them, yes. So what date was this, uh, was this financial disclosure form filed? It looks like 918.18. Okay. And can you turn to page two? Yes. Or sorry, actually, page one real quick. So on page one, you state that you had not had any employment, or that you, you were not employed at the time, correct? That's correct. And then you had not had any employment since December of 2016, correct? That's correct. Okay. So going to page two, uh, you state that... Your, your gross income, your year-to-date income was zero, correct? At that time, yes. Okay. And that any source of income that existed was a zero for the year 2018 up until September 18th, 2018. I think besides Postmates, some small thing I was doing. So you did earn income, you just didn't record it on here. It was not substantial. It was like 50 bucks. Okay, but regardless, you didn't you didn't put them on here. No. Okay. Okay. And isn't it true that in uh, the 2018 tax return for Aiden's Army, 
You stated that you received zero dollars for your work as president of the of the corporation. At the time right? I filled this out, yes, I received zero dollars. Okay. No, I'm so here's I guess let's open to it. So let's open to uh, exhibit C. And then we're going to go to the page that's Bates labeled PLTF 0390. Okay. So it states on so this is this is the Aiden's Army tax record for 2018. Mm -hmm. And it states that under I guess uh, in, so this is part six, but then in section D it says reportable compensation from the organization. And what's the number next to your name? I don't think we're looking at the same paper. So exhibit C. Mm -hmm. If you go 390. I'm on 390, but I don't see any numbers. They're all zero. Okay, so in, in section one, where it says Lindsay Lakari president. Yes. And if you go over to the right column, it says aver average hours per week, you list 40. Mm -hmm. So you were working, you, you stated in your tax record that you worked 40 hours a week. Yeah, and a, partially volunteer time. Okay, but it was your testimony <coughs> just, just earlier that you, in fact, were working 12-hour days, six days a week. I was. In some of that time, there was no money in the foundation all the time, so I would work for free. <coughs> Okay, but doesn't it state that you were working for free essentially here as well? Well, I also don't fill out the tax papers. My tax account, my tax CPA does this, so for me to explain to you paperwork that I pay somebody else to do. Well, all, all I'm asking you to do is ex is is you were paid zero dollars for your work as president. We That's not true. I was paid answer. twenty-one thousand. Okay. On this on what? this document, it says in your capacity as president, you were paid zero dollars. I did not prepare this document. But it's your it's your company's chapter is, correct? Is this accurate? I can't re zero? I can't I don't understand it. It's so how can I produce document? Your okay, honor? stop, stop, <laughs> stop. Okay, I need one person to talk at a time, and I the apologize. question is very simple. Mm -hmm. Were you paid zero dollars in 2018, as no. this document states? No. Okay. So you the tax filing for Aiden's Army is incorrect, is what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. and I believe it was amended. Okay. But you didn't produce the amended return, correct? I'm not sure I was ever asked for it. Okay. <coughs> All right, let's go to Exhibit E. So this is a document that's been admitted. It says miscellaneous income. It's a form 1099 miscellaneous. Uh, and that's your name on it, correct? That's correct. And in box seven, it states that non-employee compensation, you earn $21,750, correct? Yes, when she amended it, that's my payroll for 2018. So are you saying that this was income? Well, let's go back because in, in Exhibit B states that in your role as president, mm -hmm. you were paid zero dollars. This document states that you were paid twenty-one thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars as non-employee compensation. How can you can you explain that discrepancy, please? No, because I don't know what you're talking about. I give this information to my tax lady, and she does it. She gives it back to me, okay. and that's how it works. I'm not sure what you're talking about. So, but this document acknowledges that you made twenty-one thousand seven hundred fifty through Aiden's Army, Aiden's Army, as well as I'm acknowledging that's okay. how much I made. Okay, perfect. So let's go back to Exhibit A. Is it your testimony? I guess I'll ask. Was the entire twenty-one thousand seven hundred fifty dollars received after September uh, of twenty eighteen? A large portion of it was yes. Okay, but not all of it. Um, no, not all of it. Okay, so you didn't report the income that you'd received prior to September 18th on here that you'd gotten from Aiden's Army, correct? Prior to, I wasn't receiving very much income. But you still didn't put it. You were receiving some income, correct? How this would work is there would be no money to give me payroll. So I would still issue the checks, but there was no way to cash the checks because we could not issue payroll because there was no funding. 
so I would just hold them. So, so no, here's... I didn't always have the money. <clears throat> All right. So here, here's my question. Did you receive any income from Aiden's Army prior to September 18th, 2018? Objection, asked and answered several times. Several times. Overruled. Does that mean answer it? Yes. I re the checks I wrote were not able to be cleared, so I held them. So Ms. I did Ms. not Lepari, cash them. I received any yes money. Yes or no answer. You have to let her finish the question. But it's a yes or no well, answer. I think the court needs clarification because you're not directly answering the question, and that's why I overruled their objection. Well, he's saying because you are saying that you received checks, but he's asking you a specific timeline, and the timeline is: Did you receive income? Prior to the filing of your FDF, no, that's because a yes or a no. Prior to June of 2018, when Bobby left my house, I was not taking any payroll from Aiden's Army of Angels. It started after June, only because I was forced to pay things. So, so Ms. Lacard, the, the question is, isn't: Were you receiving income before June of 18? It's: Were you receiving any income? I did from receive Aiden's income, but it was not stop, paid out stop. to me. Do not talk over each other. The question was, did you receive income prior to filing your FDF? Yes or no? Yes, a small amount, I did. But it's not listed on your FDF, correct? Because I had not cashed those checks. All right, we'll move on. Have you ever failed to accurately list income on any sworn documents? No. All right, let's go to uh, exhibit B. And if you'll go to the second page, it's going to be Bates labeled PLTF 0372. Now, this is your financial disclosure form from 2019, as disclosed by your counsel. And in uh, Section C, it states other sources of income. Down at other, it says contracting for uh, AAOA. I assume that's Aiden's Army of Angels, yes? Yes. Okay. And how much does it state that you received monthly? Uh, it varies. It says 15. Okay. So it, it was approximately 1500 a month that you received from Aiden's Army? No. So, so what is this document stating then? At the time, Aiden's Army had no funding. So all I made that month was $1,500. So that's how this works with the nonprofit. If there's no money, there's no way to pay me. So your financial disclosure form states that you were getting monthly amounts of about $1,500. At the time I filled out the disclosure, yes. Okay, and this is your second disclosure from 2019. I guess. Okay. So you were receiving approximately $1,500 a month, or so you represented. Mm -hmm. Why did that change from 2018? Because initially I wasn't taking a payroll at all, but once I talked to my tax CPA and some consulting, they told me somebody needs to be held accountable for the foundation and needs to take a full-time payroll. And that's when I then changed it to a full-time payroll. And so was your, your position as, were you being paid for your position as president or were you being paid as an independent contractor? I was being paid as an independent contractor. There's nobody paid through the foundation, through a W-2, everybody's contracting. Okay. Um, so in 2017, you say that you filed taxes jointly with Bobby, yes? Um, I didn't want to, but he insisted, and I did. It's a simple yes or no question. You filed taxes with Bobby, yes? Yes, my CPA did it. Okay. Uh, but you never produced your personal tax records for 2017, correct? I gave them to my CPA, yes. I mean, I mean, in this case, it wasn't really relevant. One of one of the requirements the, of of NR, NRCP sixteen point one is that the parties produce tax documents. Well, we filed together, objection. and I did produce the tax documents. Okay. Um, in fact, you didn't produce any tax records at all, did you? For personal tax records, I'll say. No, I did. He had them. We were joint filed. We both had them. He actually didn't produce them to me. So you, you claim that in your 2017 tax records that 1300 was withheld by the IRS for back support 
back, uh, child support arrearages that Bobby owed, correct? That's correct. To produce any documentation to verify that? My counsel should have it. But it hasn't been produced as an exhibit in this trial. I, I've produced a lot of things, and I'm not sure what was decided to give to you guys and what was decided not to. Okay. So, I mean, at, at this point, we only have your testimony to rely on that 1300 was withheld from tax re for tax reasons from Bobby. Well, yes, and you could probably look in tax records. Okay. All right, let's go to Exhibit X. All right, so this is the letter that was sent uh, to you, for, uh, or I guess to the parties from the IRS. Uh, can you please read the notice date in the top right? October 15th. Okay. And this document was produced prior to the November 15th deadline, correct? I never received this document at all. I went to Bobby's home. But it was produced? No, never to me. So if it was produced to your counsel, they didn't give it to you? Objection. I'm going to object to all this as relevance. We attempted to uh, test, get testimony right. regarding this exhibit, and you objected, stating it wasn't relevant. And she how is it relevant now? It was okay. not this object, this exhibit that I objected to was relevant. <laughs> number one, it's in evidence. It was stipulated into evidence. Number two, you asked questions about it. Um, so he could ask questions about it. It's overruled. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, so the, the question was that if your counsel received it, they didn't give you a copy, correct? Uh, no, they did not. Okay. Let's flip over to the second page, or I guess it's the third page. Okay, so, so at the bottom it talks about explanation of changes to your 2017 form. And it cites a, uh, oh gosh. Kia's Record Service LLC states that the account was related to somebody with the last four digits of 0440. Uh, are the last four digits to your social, <laughs> social security account 0440, or 0444? Yes. Okay, so there was $12 reported by, by Kia's Record Service that wasn't, that wasn't a part of your tax, re re uh, your tax return, correct? Mm-hmm. All right, let's flip over to the next page. So there, there's a, there's a deal that states received from PayPal Incorporated, again, bearing the social security number 0444, and it states that you reported zero income from PayPal, correct? Correct, I didn't make any money on PayPal. Those okay, but, donations. but it's reported from others that you received $21,349, correct? That's correct. Okay, and you didn't report this income to the IRS. I gave it to my CPA, and she said it was donations, so she didn't ask, she didn't add it, and I asked her about this. And then again, going down under under employment compensation, from Employment Development Department, bearing Social Security zero four four four. Uh, you reported zero dollars in income. Correction, you're misrepresenting. It doesn't say employment compensation. I, I agree. I was reading Employment Development Department. You misidentified the section. I, I apologize that I misstated, Your Honor. Unemployment compensation. And it bears Social Security number 0444. Shows that uh, zero dollars was reported. Correct? That's correct. But in fact, you received $2,887. Yes? Um, I'm not sure. So is the IRS incorrect in what they sent you? I'm not saying that it's incorrect. I did get unemployment after I, I stopped working and I was caring for my son. I did get a small portion of unemployment. Okay. <coughs> um, flipping back to the first page, isn't it true that as a result of the... Uh, Underreporting on your part that the parties are owed or that the parties owe an additional $7,808 to the IRS. This is completely incorrect because once it's amended, 
it, we wouldn't know anything. So had he not withheld this paper for all these months, I, this would already been corrected. So your testimony is that, again, you never saw this document before last week? No. Despite the fact that it was produced by the defendant prior to the close of discovery in November of 2019, correct? I've never seen it. All right. All right, you stated in your testimony you moved to Las Vegas early on in 2017, correct? That's correct. And is it true that during that summer you were engaged to be married to another person besides Bobby Ganty? Yes, I was. But you called it off, yes? Yes, I did. Okay. <coughs> You married Bobby on November 25th, 2017, yes? That's correct. But Bobby had moved in during the first week of November 2017. November 4th. Okay. So it's it's your, I guess it was it was your testimony during, uh, I guess, when your, when your counsel was talking to you, that during the month of November, you, you <coughs> paid for all... All expenses related to both you and Bobby. Absolutely not. Our testimony. Okay, if there's some objection, please wait, okay? I didn't hear your objection because she was talking at the same time, so please. Um, the objection was in the same prior testimony. My, my recollection, Your Honor, is that she has testified that between the months of November through February and on, or I guess November, specifically November through February, that she was responsible for all household expenses. And that wasn't the question. You had said that she had paid for everything. Then we, we discussed bank statements okay. where clearly charges were made to. All right. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy to restate that. Thank you, counsel. So during the month of November, who covered all household expenses? He was living in my house. I covered all the household expenses in the apartment. You paid for all groceries? I wasn't really eating. My son just passed away. So there was not much groceries. Any other household? So, okay. You, you've covered... You paid for all household expenses. <coughs> okay, so you were married on November 25th. Isn't it true? That on or around November 26, 2017, you made Bobby a joint holder of your Chase account. At the instruction of Linda, yes, I did. Objection, Your Honor. It's hearsay. Sustained. So, I'll, I'll, I'll restate since the answer was objected to. Uh, yes or no, on or around November 26, 2017, you made Bobby a joint holder on your Chase checking account. Bearing the last four digits, 6263. Yes. Isn't it true that also around that time you made Bobby a joint holder on your Chase Savings account, bearing the last four digits, 6778? Yes. You claimed that sometime after, or I guess as part of your testimony, you claimed that you removed Bobby from the joint account, correct? <coughs> yes, I did. Uh, have you produced any bank statements showing when he was removed from the account? Yes, I did. Uh, are they part of the record? I don't know what my counsel turned in and what they didn't. Okay. But if there is no documentation showing when you took him off, we're forced to rely on just your testimony, yes? Yes. Okay. All right, let's, let's go to exhibit um, L. I want to flip over I want to flip over to page uh, 46. So it'll be ANT 000046. Okay. So you claimed that you weren't you weren't a part of this Buffalo Wild Wings dinner. 
No. Uh, how often would you say that you went out to eat with the defendant during the month of December? Objection, Your Honor. We, we attempted to question points regarding similar transactions as you had said. Uh, it's not relevant. Not relevant. Okay. Happy to move on. Okay, thank you. Okay. Concerning the Chase account, isn't it true that all payments that went towards the house or paying off any debt came from either the Chase checking or Chase savings account? Yes, it came from me. But it came, it came from the joint account, correct? Yes. Okay. And Bobby had, made, had been made a joint holder on these accounts before payments were made towards the house, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, let's go to... What is that? Exhibit N, the gift letters. So you testified that you, you willingly signed three separate gift letters, correct? Yes, I did. And it was also your testimony that you signed several other gift letters, yes? Objection to state's prior testimony. She testified that she, she had signed gift, three gift letters. Your Honor, she also represented in her testimony that she signed several letters that were ejected from the lender because of variations in her signature. I didn't recall that testimony. Overruled. So there were other gift letters besides these three that are in evidence that you signed? They had me duplicate the $3,000 gift letter multiple times. And you say that was because of variations in your signature? Because the angrier I got in the process, the worse my signature became. Okay, which created variations in your signature. Yes. Okay. Okay, you signed the first uh, gift letter December 20th, 2017, yes? That's correct. And the amount of this gift is for 65000 yes? A down payment for 65000 uh, Can you please read the letter uh, beginning at I, we, and continue until the word recipient? I, we, Lindsay Lucari, has given a gift of $65,000 below borrow. No repayment of this gift is expected or implied from either cash, future services, or the recipient. You signed this letter, correct? I did. And you signed it as Lindsay Lucari, yes? I did. And you understood that this letter was a necessary part of the mortgage process, yes? Yes, I did. When you signed this document, was it false? With the intent that we would both be on title. So, yes or no question, was the document false when you signed it? Objection. I, I don't understand, don't the, understand question. the question. The document being false. Your Honor, it states that she is given a gift and no repayment of this is accepted. She's claiming now that that was never her intent, but she signed a document stating the same. Perhaps you should rephrase the question. Okay. Okay, I'll, I will do that. So, this letter states that no repayment of the gift is expected or implied in the form of cash or future services of the recipient, yes? On December 20th, yes. Okay. But you're stating now that it was your intent when you signed this letter that you were expecting a repayment. No, my intent was when I signed the third gift letter that I was respect, re, expecting the repayment of 75000 so all of them, on the third letter. So the third letter that was signed January 17th, mm -hmm. When, when you signed it, and it, it bears substantially the same language, correct? Yes, it does. Objection. Uh, we're not on that document, so... If, if they can identify any difference in the document and the language... I'm objecting to your questioning, referencing a document that we haven't, we haven't looked at. It's a document and evidence, Your Honor. And it was, referenced by, it was referenced by the plaintiff. If you'll permit me, I, I need some clarification sure. to your question. This document, the very first gift letter, he asked you at $65,000, and it states that you're making a gift to him, and you said, as of this date, 12 20, 17, that was your intent. Yes, ma'am. Uh, 
Yeah. But I no, guess let's your question. <laughs> oh, certainly. I mean, so let's let's flip over to uh, so two pages to page bearing three hundred five, dated January seventeenth. So was it on, on January 17th when you signed this letter, was it your intent that these funds were, were to be a gift and that no repayment was expected? No, that's why I sent the letter agreement prior to signing this document telling him that none of these were gifts. Okay, but you still signed this document bearing this language? Only because he signed my document. It's yes or no? Yes. All right, thank you. That's the $4,060 that you're on that document, right? Yes, yes, Your Honor. <clears throat> And then you also signed another gift letter flipping back a page for 3000 and that was dated January 1st, 2018, yes? That's correct. And it states that the funds came out of the Chase checking account? Yes, it does. And it bears the name Lindsay Lucari as, as your signature, yes? Yes, it does. Okay. Was it your intent when you signed that to make it a gift? Yes, ma'am. So your intent changed between January 1st and January 17th? Yes, ma'am. The date of the last gift letter? Yes. So was, uh, was Valley West Mortgage aware of the letter of agreement? I've never sure. talked to Valley West Mortgage, so I can't tell you anything about them. Had you ever sent this letter of agreement to Valley West Mortgage? Why would I do that? I was sending it to Bobby. It's a simple yes or no question. No, I sent okay. it to Bobby. Okay. So when when you signed you, you stated when you signed this third gift letter from January 17, 2018, that despite the language you I guess despite the language you still expected some form of repayment in the future. I thought I took every step to protect myself, yes. Okay. Uh, was it your intent to mislead Valley West Mortgage Company with any of these gifts? <coughs> Objection, Your Honor. It's her intent to mislead Valley West Mortgage. So I'll, I'll restate. Uh, did you intend to mislead Valley West Mortgage Company with any of these gift letters? I never had any interactions with Valley West Mortgage Company. I only dealt with Linda. But you were aware that these gift letters were necessary for obtaining the mortgage. Right, but it was also necessary that he sign the letter of agreement before I would sign the last gift letter. Was it necessary that Bobby sign the letter of agreement in order to get a mortgage from Valley West Mortgage? Yes, because it was my money. Um, isn't it true that you did not apply for the mortgage? No. And that you never, in fact, signed any kind of loan application? Never at all. Okay. Why didn't you fill out a loan application? Because me and Bobby previously made an agreement that I would not go on the loan. We would both go on title. What was your credit in November of 2017? Bad credit. Would you have been able to qualify for this house to purchase it on your own? No, which is why... It goes directly to, to their knowledge at the time. There's there's a reason that the loan was put into Bobby's name and not Lindsay and it's knowledge that they possessed at the time. But her knowledge to speculate whether she would have been approved if she said she never submitted the application. So we're asking her whether or not she would have been granted, <coughs> but she never did it. Your Honor. Overruled. Would you have qualified for a mortgage to purchase this house on your own? No. So Bobby was the only one in your marriage who could qualify for a mortgage, correct? He actually didn't qualify either. So it's your testimony that Bobby did not, was not approved for a mortgage? It is my testimony that Bobby told me the only thing that needed to be paid off to qualify him for a mortgage was the car that I paid off. That was it. Did you ever meet with the lender? No. So, um, he's kind of moving on. You claimed that you wrote two checks. Part of your testimony was that you wrote two checks. Uh, one on December 14th and one on December 15th of 2017, each for $3,000, yes? That's correct. 
And it was your testimony that one of these checks went to Bobby and the other went to Linda non ERA, correct? That's correct. Have you produced any copies of these checks? Yes, I have produced the copies of the check to the earnest deposit. Are they on the record? I gave them to my counsel. I don't know what's been put on the record. Okay. So if these checks are not on the record, then the only evidence that we have of their existence is your word. And also text messages from Linda saying that I wrote those checks. I objection hearsay, Your Honor. Okay, so it's your claim that you told Linda Na and Bobby Ante on January 15th that you wish to cancel uh, the purchase of the house. Yes. Um, but isn't it true that after that time you took actions which contradicted that sentiment? Objection. No. Uh, I don't understand what actions mean. It's an overbroad question. Overruled. You took no actions after that time that went that that enabled the house to be purchased. I sent a letter of agreement to protect my interest. I then told him I would go review the documents, and again we would both be on title. And I would review the documents and then make a decision. Okay, so after you claimed that you wanted to cancel the sale, and that was January 15th of 2018, yes? Yes. All right, but you signed a gift letter on January 17th, correct? After he signed the letter of agreement. It's a simple yes or no question, Mr. Yes. Hardy. And the gift letter was specifically related to money that went to the balance on Bobby's car loan, yes? I believe it was a duplicate of the earnest deposit. Uh, if we want to look at Exhibit L, or I guess it's Exhibit N, we can look at the gift letter on, it was executed on January 17th. Uh, if you want to read under the Yes, sex. you're right. It says for the car that I paid off in December. Okay. So even though this payment had occurred back in November of 2017, you knew that in order to finalize and purchase this house, you would have to sign and execute this gift letter and send it to, uh, to Ms. Knopf. That was part of the process. Okay. And you did sign and send that letter to, to Linda, correct? Yes. Okay. All right, let's talk about the letter of agreement. So after, uh, you know, the, the proposed cancellation of, of the purchase, you drafted the letter of agreement, uh, which specifically contemplates the purchase of the house, correct? I don't understand your question. Con yeah. Contemplates well, the house? I'm confused. Is, is your letter of agreement a document which, which operates under the understanding that the house is going to be purchased? The house would only be purchased if the letter of agreement was signed. Okay. Let's go. I think my age. Okay. So let's, if, if you'll open to your, um, to your binder, the big binder, mm -hmm. um, we're going to go to exhibit six in the, the section labeled PLTF. 0108. All right. So I just I want to keep both of these open because it's the two letters. I'd like to be able to. Uh, I'm not sure where it is in your book. So my book is a Exhibit H. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So um, you drafted the letter that's contained in Exhibit H, this letter of agreement. You drafted this on January 17th, correct? I drafted PLTFO 108 on January 17th. So it's, it's your claim that you drafted this this letter bearing the date and this uh, and this additional writing, which we discussed at length on Friday, 
It's your testimony that you drafted that first. Yes. And that's the one that you sent to Bobby first. Yes. Had you signed it when you sent it to Bobby? No. Okay. Who altered this document <clears throat> to create the second If version? I answered, that would be speculating. Okay, so it's your claim that you, you or actually, I'll, I'll see if I can remember your testimony exactly. Is it your testimony that this letter of agreement from Exhibit H, that you, you never had seen that document? No, I did not see that document until my counsel showed it to me. And so you never sent a text message to Bobby asking him whether or not, or asking him why he didn't sign the one that was updated? No. I sent him the letter of agreement. There was one. Uh, Your Honor, if I, if I could. Your Honor, I'm going to object that this, this hasn't been produced in the case. It's Your Honor, it's, it's being used solely for impeachment purposes. At the time of, of uh, I guess, January 17, 2018, was your phone number 702-577-6657? Yes, it was. And if you go down to the second line, does it say, from coming from that phone number, you didn't sign the one that was updated? Can you repeat the question? So that, that second bullet that was sent to Bobby's phone, which states you didn't sign the one that was updated, did that come from your phone? No, I do not, re I do not remember any of this conversation. So I'm sorry, I can't give you any testimony on this. But that, that number at the top is your phone number from the time. This is a screenshot that can could have been made. That was my phone number, but I have all the conversations. No, no this I did not send these messages. Okay. No. So it's it's your claim that you never saw an amended document. And in fact, this 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 one labeled PLTF 0108 is in fact the only document that ever existed that you knew of. Objection. As she she testified that she did receive it, but it was it's all counsel. Would you like me to repeat the question, Mr. Tari? Yes, please. <coughs> so it's your testimony that you never received, or that you never even knew of, any other, any other version of this letter of agreement other than the one that's labeled PLTF 0108. Yes, that's absolutely my testimony. And it's your testimony that this text message did not come from you, did not come from your phone. I did not write that. Okay. Is there any version of these documents that bears the signature of both yourself and Mr. Anton? Yes. When he sent it back to me, it said signed and agreed. He then texted me that he got it and that he signed it. And then I printed it, I signed it, and I filed it away in my files. All right, let's flip over a couple pages to PLTF 0110. Now, you signed this document, correct? Yes, I did. And what, what name did you use when you signed it? Lakari. So on January 17th, you were in the habit of signing documents by, with the name Lindsay Lakari? Yes. Okay. Is there any signature over Bobby's uh, name and info? No, when it sent it back to me, it said... It's, it's a simple yes or no question. No. Card. Thank you. All right. Where was Bobby when you sent him uh, the letter of agreement? I'm not sure. Isn't it true that you informed Bobby that you would not wire the funds for escrow until he signed this agreement, un unless he signed this agreement? Absolutely. 
Did you give him a chance to have the document reviewed by an attorney? Um, he had the option to do that. Based on your knowledge, was Mr. Ante at the title office at the time? I'm not sure where he was. Okay. How much time did you give? Uh, were you aware that funds needed to be transferred to the title company that day for the purchase to go through? Yes. Okay. And so you sent this document, which you, you say you drafted the 17th, yes? Mm -hmm. And you sent it to Mr. Ante for the first time on the 17th. I downloaded the program just to send him this document. Okay. And you also knew that escrow funds had to be sent on the 17th? Yes. Okay. So he didn't have multiple days to consider the ramifications of this document, did he? I'm not sure. Well, if you sent it to him on the 17th... He had every right not to sign anything. If you sent it to him on the 17th, and escrow was due the 17th, otherwise the purchase would fall through. Did he have, did he have anything, or I guess, did he have a day or two in which he could review this document with an attorney? Um, I guess no. Okay. Okay. Isn't it true that after you claimed to cancel the sale, you went to the bank and sent a wire transfer to the title company? No, I did not know I was seeing a wire transfer to the title company. Okay. Will you please open to Exhibit 6, <coughs> uh, bearing the numbers. Actually, it's, we're just going to flip a page or two, because it's uh, PLTF 0112. All right, do you recognize this document? Yes, I do. How do you recognize it? Bobby brought it to my office. Is it substantially the same as when you submitted as an exhibit with your complaint for separate maintenance? I'm sorry? Is this document, is it in substantially the same form as when you submitted it as an exhibit with your complaint for separate maintenance in December of 2018? Yes. Okay. Can I have the Bates number again, please? Yes, Your Honor. It's, it's Bates number PLTF 0112. All right, I, I would move to admit this exhibit as exhibit, I guess this would be, is this double I for me? Double H. Double H, all right, let's admit it. I, I would move for admission as exhibit double H. Objection. All right, so this document was the document that you had on the day of January 17th, 2018, yes? Yep. Okay, can you, can you read out the name of the company at the top? National Title Company. <clears throat> All right, and in the middle of the page, there's a, there's a sentence starting with please and ending with transfer. Can you please read that sentence? Where? It's in the middle of the page. It's a sentence that begins with please reference. Please reference the escrow number and reference segment with your wire transfer. And below that, does it list what, what the escrow number is? It does. Does it state that there's an escrow officer's name? It does. And so it's your testimony that you had this document on January 17th, yes? Yes. But it's also your testimony that you had no idea that transferring these funds to this number would be utilized for escrow. I also didn't know I wasn't on the title. A simple yes or no question, Ms. Lakari? No, I didn't know. Okay. <clears throat> All right, it's your testimony. Let's go to exhibit Q. So let's flip over to the page that is that bears number 878. And on here it states, um, or I guess, you, you claim that you never signed this document, yes? I never did. You claim that you, you, I guess, 
When did you first receive this document? When did you? When I filed it? the complaint at Galvar, it was then first produced to me. Okay. What's the date it says that that was signed? On the 17th. And you just stated in your testimony that you were in the habit of signing documents with the name of Lindsay Lucari on January 17th, 2018, correct? That's correct. But you claim that this isn't your signature? Absolutely not. And it was your testimony earlier that you had been known to have a great deal of variation. No, in just your with that gift letter. That gift letter. That's it. So, on, on documents in which you were, you were required to sign your name, there was a pattern of variation. I wouldn't call one document a pattern. But didn't you testify that they, they had to give you multiple gift letters to sign? They had me re-sign the same gift letter over and over. So it was multiple signatures? On the same On multiple paper. pages? Yeah. Okay. And you stated that there was variation. Yeah, the, the angrier I needs. got with the process, the worse my signature became. Okay. any kind of handwriting expert or analysis showing that this is not your signature? No, but I did offer to. When, when, when was that offer made? I, I let my counsel know that I was willing to take a lie detector test and get a handwriting expert that I would pay for myself to prove exactly what happened. But no expert was produced, was there? I'm not sure. And no handwriting analysis was done, correct? I don't believe my counsel had the opportunity to do so. Isn't it true that you filed a police report on January 7th of 2020 claiming that your signature was forged? Yes, because there was a crime committed, my signature was forged. It's a simple yes or no question. Yes. Sorry. Thank you. And in that police report, you claimed, well, isn't it true that in that police report, you claimed that Nikki bought or I guess Nikki Bott had forged your signature and that she had conspired with Bobby to steal money from you. No, in January, I thought it was Linda and Bobby who forged my signature. And when I went to the police station, they told me this is a marital dispute and they didn't file anything. It wasn't until just about a month ago when it, I found out it was Nikki Bott who forged my signature and she notarized her own document and I filed a police report to then report the crime. But you filed multiple police reports concerning this, yes? Yes, at first. Okay. Two. Okay. So then this first report was filed, I guess let's let's open up to Exhibit 6 in your book, and it's going to bear the number 322. Yes. Does it look substantially the same as at the time when you filed it? Uh, yes. Uh, Your Honor, I move to admit as exhibit. Now, now we're at double I. Yes. I do not have a three two two in plaintiff's binder. Exhibit six. Oh. I do have it. Has a page in front of it saying ex Exhibit 62, if that helps. It's two pages, counsel. It says one of two and two of two. Correct. So it, it would be 322 and, and 323. 